And here we are. We're we're live on the on the show floor. Hey, it's great Sean to see you, John. Hey, it's amazing to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. I'm glad you made it across the pond safely. Yes. Hopefully, I'll make it <laughs> hopefully back. Hopefully, make it back home <laughs> yes. safely as well. You will. Yes. It might take you a few minutes. Yes. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, it's a nice long single stretch home. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for joining us here, and thanks everybody for. Joining us on location, I'm Sean Martin, host of the Redefining Cybersecurity podcast, and we are at RSA Conference, and I am joined by Sean John, who I mentioned, uh, from NCC Group, and we're going to talk about a new report yeah. that he just put out, and uh, some of the findings, and and how that's going to impact organizations, not just in the UK, but abroad, right, yeah. All, yeah. all over the world. So, before we get into that, though, uh, a few words from you about what your role is at NCC Group, and some of the things you're working on. So I'm the Chief Technology Officer at NCC Group, so we're a global cybersecurity services company, very big in North America, UK, Europe uh, and Asia Pacific, uh, headquartered out of Manchester in the UK. Uh, my role as the Chief Technology Officer is to really lead insights, intelligence and innovation for the company. So the threat intelligence team work for me, we have a, a research function uh, and then uh, a function that helps and works with our capability leaders on evolving our offerings. So I've been here this week looking at what technology providers there might be that we can work with uh, to help our customers, really. Yeah. Technology, uh, such a broad broad thing. And I'm, before we get to the point, I want to talk to you briefly about kind of your, your role and perhaps connections with other technologists. Um, yes. Because you're able to have conversations from an innovation and a capabilities perspective that many can't, I'd say. Yeah. So how, how does your role help you connect with some of your your customers in a way that, that can help them? Well, it's really been being able to sit there and obviously having been around in the industry for a long time, understanding the challenges they face. And I've been at technology companies for most of the last 20 years, so it was always, how can my technology help you? Right. And now it's like, actually, we have some very smart people that can come in and help you to do things we do. Uh, helping people to, to build what they're trying to do, consulting and implementation, doing some technical assurance and some, some testing with some of the best testers in the world, incident response, and then managed services. So having that background of having worked in technology and then knowing where the service gap is allows me to have that conversation with customers around, you know, where are your challenges, what are your pain points, and actually the things that we have and the people that we have that can maybe come and help you to get to where you need to. Right. And this year's theme at the conference is the, the art of possible. Are you, are you seeing some cool things happening? Um, there, there are some cool things. So I was saying I'm probably getting a little bit old and jaded where you sort of go, well, there, there, there's a lot of variants of the theme and seeing things. Now, as expected, there's a lot of AI here. Yeah. And I used to think, well, you know, AI is a differentiator. I think it's almost it's expected that you're going to have right. AI now. Uh, I did find a company, and I've forgotten the name, I just was up in the early stage expo. I was like, oh, yeah. the killer use case for AI is mm. to actually help to find sensitive data because we're really bad at classifying it, aren't we? We're bad, really good at finding it. And classification isn't natural to most people. So like, if anyone had that, and I found a company up in the startup uh -huh. space that does it, so I was like, whoa. There you go. So, uh, so they're That's the ones to follow up. It'd be really great for them if I could remember their name <laughs> off the top of my head, but uh, they are a really interesting company. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully people go to the sandbox and check it out. But yeah. we're, we're here to talk about the great work that you and your team do. Yeah. And so you've done some research, pulled the report together, it's the inaugural report. So give us some background on how that, all that came yeah. together this year. So we have a, a really strong government affairs team that work with policy makers around the world, particularly in the UK and the US uh, and Europe, uh, basically talking to them about you know what the regulations are, we are evolving policy, evolving governance and control from a public sector perspective of of, of the industry and it's been a lot of regulation a lot of change capping over the last few years so we put together this digital dawn report where we really went out and did a combination of some quantitative surveys and some quality chatting with uh, and, uh, uh, surveys just to get a feel for what is the pressure that's creating so much regulation at the moment and where might people be and, and therefore what does that mean for us as an industry and for people uh, that are trying to use technology and, and how they need to deal with it. So. So what were, what were some of the highlights from, from this year? So one of the things that's really interesting that came through, and you probably see it uh, in, in certain parts, well, I know in the UK we've got the online harms bill, which is very much being driven by the parents of children that were affected by social media 
um, right. yeah, either suicide uh, sites or, or bullying or, or elements like that. But it happens across the, uh, more broadly than that in terms of being safe online and now with AI. There's actually a, a big citizen push for regulation, which okay. it hasn't been in the past. Quite often it's been like governments choosing to do it. If you think about the conversation that's happening around AI, the conversation that's happening around social media, a lot of it is coming from from citizens and only people lobbying their representatives to say, you know, we need to regulate this, which is right. something a little bit different to where we've been in the past. Which I think that just reflects the fact that that cyber is now part of everybody's life and it's embedded right. into the world. And and the other thing is seeing that there's actually a, a lot of col a collaboration going on in terms of regulation, both cross-party, because it's not really part of political cyber okay. and being safe online, but also across countries. So if you look at things like the emerging regulation of AI, although you know the U European Union is doing something, we've got AI institutes in the UK, the US, Canada. Right. Everyone's actually looking to say, how can they work together and harmonize at least those organizations with similar, va uh, country, sorry, with similar values. They're all looking at how we can harmonize and work from the beginning, which is actually quite useful and interesting because historically what you see is lots of different regulation then you've right. got to work out how you deal with it and I think just as a way a lot of people ended up following the GDPR with their own flavor I think rather than doing that now everyone's actually coming together to go what are the things that matter and how do we regulate and um, yeah there is a lot of interest in right. regulating the space which is why we're seeing that explosion of regulations. So two questions what, what do you make of the fact that it's the citizens pushing where yeah. typically it's been government entities, lobbyists, and, and um, the, there's probably some battles that, yeah. that probably could have happened earlier yes. in that sense, because, but because of lobbyists, maybe it didn't happen. Yeah. But now the citizens, so the, that's the first question. What do you make of that shift? Yeah. And then how do, how do you see it impacting the way businesses run yeah. now? So there's two things. So obviously the citizens pushing for it means that there will be a continued pressure to make it happen. Right. But it also means that they might have an opinion about what should be done that may not be practical to implement. And, you know, really, victim, victims should have an input into how, it, how something hurts and harms them. But if they design the actual regulation of the law, that could sometimes become too punitive so, uh, and, uh, and difficult to implement in practical. And so from the point of view, from an organisation's perspective, it's try not to stop the regulation but try to talk about how do we make this something that's practical and implementable so if one for one example there's a lot of push for age verification particularly right. in social media media which seems very simple and easy to a parent of a child that's seen content they shouldn't have done but actually when you think about that from a privacy person's perspective that means collecting a lot of personal data about people in order to prove that you are the age and maybe organizations that you don't want having personal data suddenly collecting it, which then leads to data breach issues. I think from the point of view of an organization looking to respond and work with regulation, you've just got to work on the assumption that it's there and it will increase and it will go there. So don't fight against it. Look at how you can right. embrace and do the right thing and be proactive. I think that's why you see a lot of supply chain and governance and compliance solutions around here. And it's really how do you make that easy to do, as automated as possible, and as responsive as possible. Now do, you, do you see it? Uh, so clearly when we're, when we're talking about harm and children, and when, as soon as you connect it to social media, a lot of companies might say, we're yeah. not social media. Yeah. Um, do you see any bleed over in terms of how something might be defined yeah. that will then make it apply to any organization that collects data. I mean, some of the things with age verification, there's a danger there. I think we're more for, mo for most organizations, it probably gets into the world of AI and machine learning and the fact that there will be a lot of regulation and things like that. So yeah, the social media is a very specific one, but there is now then that, you know, if you're selling items on an internet presence to people, maybe there will be, you can expect that there might be more uh, scrutiny of that and, and regulation of that just as happened with the GDPR it might right. be applied in one use case it, it, it grew so you have to prepare for that I think when it comes to 
to more broadly be on social media I mean that that citizen push on on um, the, the the social media is one thing but then there's also one about I want to just be able to just buy a device that's secure so yeah. this whole you know six, uh, software bill of materials the whole making sure you're you've got security built into any devices you create that you're doing security by design and yeah. cyber resilience those two phrases that we're hearing a lot and coming yeah. along and I think that's a sign of that more broader general you know use use case and, and pressure so we want to be able to use technology but we want to know it's secure from the beginning and then it's going to be resilient and it's not going to take the country or, or the business down right and our organizations and obviously from the UK I'd love that perspective because um, yeah. a lot of folks we talk to in the US have the US perspective yeah um, What's your, what's your view on the maturity level for organizations to be ready at the executive staff level yeah. to say, we want to embrace technology, we want to create an infrastructure that's resilient, we want to promote safety, be it physical and the OT or online yeah. for children or whatever, depending on the business. And it needs to be secure as well, because that, yeah. that always comes, but. Typically, and especially when we look at regulation, it's yeah. we build something and then we audit and see how well we yeah. do. So wh how's, what's the maturity level of the UK organizations? And maybe your yeah. broader view, because obviously yeah. NCC is broad uh, global as think, well. Yeah, I think it sort of depends on vertical. So if you go okay. into the regulated verticals, I think this ap applies globally. So if you go into certain verticals like financial services, they, they much more get it than say, if you go into retail, which traditionally hasn't been as regulated. Right. Um, there are some organizations that are really good examples of doing it, but I think still the majority aren't. I think it's, what, only 30% of boards actually have people that are cyber and willing to talk about cyber at that board level. And I think that's particularly in the UK, but I think that's, you can look across the globe, right. that, that'll, that'll be re reflected. I mean, the UK's probably one of the more mature countries because they've had quite a mature cyber strategy. They've been trying to push boards to care about security, just as has been happening in the US. In other places, it's probably less so. And, and the challenge is, of course, when we go and look at the opportunity of technology, people are almost treating cyber risk as something that belongs to IT and it's not a business right. risk. And actually, you need to say, so I'm investing in this technology, I also need to think about what the threat is that comes with that. And investing in cyber is really managing that threat to allow you to maximize the opportunity. That, that equation still isn't happening a lot, which is why security is at the end. Right. Uh, which is why you've got this pressure for cyber resilience. So yeah, that's why I say UK financial services are particularly good because you had the, uh, the, the stress testing that was done after the financial cra uh, crash in 2008. They brought in the CBEST testing, which, uh, you know, there's the, 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 the stress testing of how resilient the organization as a whole, but there is a cyber part of that, which is a threat-led red team pen test. And then that's got into Europe with Tiber, and then we have Dora coming the yeah, Digital yeah. Operation Resilience Act. And what's good then is that drive towards principles and mm. resilience, not towards a checklist. Right. And too many boards still look for the checklist. And you actually, I mean, say for 10 years, we need to get people having a more of a conversation. It's better than it was. You know, 30% is much better than where we yeah. were 10 years ago. But we've still got more work to do for people to be really thinking about risk. I mean, our board do, but the nature of our right. business is they, they care about it. Right. But if you go into many others, you know, particularly in non-regulated industries, uh, it's still, there's a long way to go. So how, how does NCC Group unlock some of those conversations? I mean, we, we, I continue to hear this dichotomy between yeah. the business and IT security specifically. How, how do you change the narrative? How do, you, yeah. how do you change the language or how do you unlock it, I guess? So, really so we have some, some senior consultants who will actually go in and, and brief the board. Our, our board members actually also are members on other boards and they drive the, uh, the message that way. But we will actually go in and we'll do tabletop exercises, we'll do okay. preparing people. But also the, the advanced testing and the penetration testing that we do, uh, whether that's of vehicles, hardware, devices, cryptography, yes, that's a very technical element, but quite often it's then taking that and translating that into to what does that mean for you as an organization. And with some of these threat-led penetration testing scenarios, we're very involved in 
looking at using our threat intelligence to work out what is a scenario that's really realistic for an organization, doing the red team test to prove we can get in, which comes with some technical controls, but then having a, a senior advisor who can actually go in and translate that into so what. So what does right. that mean for you for the company? And that's the big thing for a board. So what? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there's the technical things and we can connect with it, but so what from a business perspective is that question that we need to be posing or giving an, giving an idea of what, people, what a board should do to yeah. having that business conversation. So because we're quite broad, we've got the very, very deep techies, but we've also got the people that can talk business as well. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the tactics and the strategy yeah, exactly. coming together. What's... Um, I'm going to take the easy one off the table, AI. Okay, right, okay. What, what are some other tech trends that you're seeing that organizations need to be cognizant of? I mean, there's the one that's been going on for years, isn't there, about consolidation and simplification. And you, right. you consolidate and simplify what you're doing, um, but then Both you have a gap. hardware on yeah, software? Yeah, 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 so I'll be security tooling, because yeah. there's too many tools, we constantly right. say that. But then you could, people consolidate down, but then you've got a gap for some new emerging tech without saying the word that I'm not going to, I'm bad for mentioning. <laughs> so you go off and get some other controls. That means you've then got tools sprawl again, and then you've consistently got consolidation. There's another interesting thing that I'm sort of tracking in industry where, you know, Spiky's were like a testing company. So you've got your, your red team testing, your pen, te pen, te pen testing, your PCI compliance testing, your really advanced yeah. code reviews on one end. And on the other end, we've had like vulnerability management, vulnerability scanning for years, we then attack surface management, and now continuous controls monitoring. There's almost like a trend that I think is happening over time, and you can see it in some of the people that are here, that we're getting towards that almost continuous controls management of right. help me to do the automated remediation, help me to do the patching, bring in the pen test and correlate it, it with it. We're on the early days of that journey, but that's a definite trend we can see happening, which for us as a services company, it's like, how yeah. do we make sure we adjust and apply both? Yeah, and, and, and what I hear there is, I mean, you have world-renowned researchers doing yes, all yeah, this yeah. hardcore stuff that most organizations can't yeah. get their head wrapped around, yeah. right? It's very technical, very deep. And then translating that into action. Yeah. And then yeah. obviously we talked about uh, kind of the strategy to unlock the, the, the transform. I, I, I believe security needs a transformation. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to start with that point of we have this exposure. We need to reduce complexity. We need to simplify. We need to consolidate. We need to automate, yes. orchestrate. Yeah. And it, I believe it's going to be a lot driven by the researchers I think that so. have this technical knowledge of this is how we close that gap. This is how we yeah. tighten. This is how we. So, yeah. any any thoughts on that? I think that's absolutely true. So, a lot of things get called AI. Sorry to swear, mm. <laughs> say that word. But when they're actually really automation, and let's right. not overcomplicate it. Let's right. make sure it's simple and automated. And yeah, we need to make sure that we're you know doing that. Keep it simple, stupid, all the way along the way, and making sure we're taking that basic approach. We're actually at that point where, as an industry, I think we're beginning to mature and professionalize. So right. there is that requirement that you have a much more business-driven approach, your business outcome, but that also you are thinking about how to do things in a more sensible way. Um, that we're, we're building the skills and the profession in a way that people are happening. And you know, we're less the hobbyist with a screwdriver and more right. the <laughs> how do we automate and make it simplified and orchestrated and, and built into the way that the business works. So, so effectively we've been going from market transformation, which is like new tech coming, forcing the digital transformation that business, well, business is having to transform, then digital transformation in IT. We're almost at that security transformation now for, from, from, from that perspective where you need to be plugged into the business, connecting yes. them, using you as a, an advisor, but then also thinking about not just how do I secure this, but how am I, securing and enabling the business process with the security I do, not just yeah. doing security. Yeah, not security. disrupting the business. Yeah. And as, as you mentioned the screwdriver, right? I, I can picture a lot of organizations recognizing they need to make a change. Yeah. They, they get help and, and, and see they have exposure and weaknesses. And all they want to do is bring a hammer because they, yeah. <laughs> they get frustrated, right? They, they can't actually yeah. take, take meaningful action because they don't have the budget, they don't have the staff, they don't yeah. have the knowledge, they don't have 
the yeah. strategy to do that in a way that supports the business without disrupting it. But we all know what happens when you take a hammer to your IKEA flat pack because <laughs> you can't or other 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 flat packs <laughs> being flat available. Pack, yes. Yeah. You yeah, don't, you just, don't, it doesn't hammer, end well. Hammer that screw in yeah. there, it'll be fine. It's actually, a, I've been reading some books about like planning and things like that, and one is about why big projects fail, looking at building of bridges and things right. like that. And quite often because people, they want to be act quickly, so they, 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 they think fast, right. and, then, and, then, and then when they actually go to action and implementation, it goes very slowly, because all the things they were expecting come along, and they get lots of shocks, and... They don't deal with it. I think that happens a lot in security, where we're so like, well, the risk is there now. We need to do something. Or now maybe you need to do the quick hammer now, but then you need to think slow and do the planning and think about how we're going to do it right. You know, how many IT projects can we post point to where they went too quickly to implementation and it ended up being yep. a big, big mess? So. Yep. You know, obviously the UK, the post office being one of those, that's the, the worst example, I think. So, but if you actually can think slowly, do the planning, work out what you need, and then act in, in sprints about the things that matter and prioritizing that, you know, embrace the MVP yeah. and then expand from there. We need to do that more, yeah. as opposed to what we do is, the, the world's yeah. falling down, let's go throw some money now, yeah, yeah. And, and you can't do everything at once anyway. Exactly. I think what, what many people forget is it's been done before. Yes. People have done it successfully, so don't try to reinvent the yeah. wheel with a hammer. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, well, Sean John, it's a pleasure to see you, as always. You. Great to chat with you. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll connect with you again soon and, yeah, and talk more about what you're up to at NCC Group. And, yeah. and everybody listening, thank you for joining us on location here at RSA Conference. Be sure to connect with Sean John and the team at NCC Group and grab a copy of the report and learn some more about that. And uh, people have done it before. Don't try to <laughs> recreate the wheel here. So thanks everybody for joining. See ya.